Hi guys, welcome back. My name is Jaspreet and I'm really excited about the project today. This is a project I want to do for a long, long time, but I've only just tried it. And it is a decorative piece that we're going to be making today. So while I'll be using a stoneware clay, which has to be fired in a kiln, for those of us who don't have access to a kiln, you can use air dry clay and you can use polymer clay to make this piece. Let me show you what it is. Uh, it is this beautiful, gorgeous, little vase it's plain on the inside has texture on the outside and because it is decorative piece you can make it using air dry clay and polymer clay though my piece will be completely functional i mean i can use it for food if i want to but that's on the plan this is more like a centerpiece on top of the table uh, that's what i have planned for this one and i will show you another version at the end uh, that I've made using the same technique and the good thing is you don't need any special forms and any special tools for this. This is a fairly simple project which most of us can do with things that we find in a house. So I really love the organic form, the ruffles around the edges. I think this looks beautiful, uh, not something that I've done before but I'm really excited about it. So let's get started and I'll show you how to make this. Okay, so let's get started. This is the clay that I'll be using. This is slightly different than the clay that I usually use. Uh, my regular clay is a white stoneware clay, which looks like this after firing, post firing. It's this color. It's quite close to white. But this clay, though it looks gray right now, it's going to turn into this beigey color after the final firing. So this is a slightly different color clay, slightly darker. So if I compare the two, you can see the difference. So what happens is on clays like this, if you put lighter colors and lighter celadons, they tend to become a little deeper. They may not give you the true color. Like a pink on this will look much duller as compared to probably on a white body. That's the only difference is also stoneware clay. It does have some specs, uh, but they don't usually show, especially with the kind of glazing I do. Uh, especially in this one, it's all covered. It's I think soft white on this. And I think it looks beautiful. So that's a clay that I'll be using today. You can use any clay, whatever clay that you use. In fact, this project, like I said in the beginning, is perfect. In fact, like I said in the beginning, this project is perfect for those who want to try their hand at polymer clay or air dry clay because this is a decorative piece that we are making. You can try all of these techniques. You can apply all of these techniques and make something with your polymer clay, which is your oven baked clay, which has to be fired in an oven, has to be baked or air dry clay. It doesn't need any kind of firing or baking. It just dries outside within two to three days. So you can use that as well. And because I have a kiln and the clay that I work with is a stoneware clay, I'm going to be using my stoneware clay. So I'm going to start with first compressing the clay. For that, I'm going to be using my Cheryl Mud Tool Drip with the flat side facing down. Just go over the clay surface. Now this clay was rolled out a couple of days back and I did leave it covered under plastic, but I can see it's stiffened up a tiny bit. Now for this project, you do not necessarily need to add texture. You can create a plain, simple white or whatever color vase that you want. Um, because I'm into texture and <laughs> I enjoy texture, I'm going to be adding the texture. And this texture is going to be on the outside. So this is a texture I'll be using. It is a placemat and I got it from Sheen. Um, if I can find it, a lot of these, they go out of stock pretty soon. So if I can find it, I will link it. If not, um, I do have an Amazon storefront on which I list anything and everything that I can find, whatever I use and if you can find it on Amazon, I'll just list it there so you can easily go and have a look. So I've just placed my placemat with the face down, with this side down. Now this has been used with clay before, so I don't need to add any cornstarch. If I'm using it for the first time, I will add a little bit of cornstarch to it. So I'm just placing this here and then I'm using my pony roller, just a regular pony roller and then start pressing it in the clay and I'm going to spend some time doing this it's not like one press and you're done you have to spend some time pressing this in and like I said my clay has firmed up a tiny bit so it's going to take a little bit more effort to get a nice imprint so I take my time with this step because once you release once you remove the placemat you'll not really be able to go back in and you know uh, deepen the texture like paste it back again and try and get a decent texture you won't be able to do that it will just be a big mess so you have this one shot better to spend some time getting a nice deep impression I think this looks good to me 
right now before i release remove the mat i'm going to just release my clay the slab from the board because this will stick to the board given that i've pressed it so hard okay here it is now i'm gonna get a needle tool pin tool needle tool whatever it's called pull out one side ah this is the best part oh my god look at that <laughs> oh that's lovely every time i do this i get this <laughs> thrill <laughs> okay so this is what my texture looks like now the good thing is because with this placemat i like the organic uh, rim around this placemat. I really like it. So I'm going to be cutting it around that. So you don't necessarily need to have like a round or a symmetrical placemat to be able to do this. You can, you know, make a nice round, like proper circle. You can have an irregular circle. You ha can have these variations on the rim. All of this is okay. It's up to you how you want your piece to look. Because I have this placemat and it has this beautiful rim that I enjoy, I'm going to be cutting it around around this shape itself. But once I make, once I start making the piece, you'll understand you don't necessarily need to be um, as particular about the rim because it's a fairly organic piece. Now, if you see, while I'm cutting, I'm not making any deep cuts, like any sharp cuts. I'm not cutting like this at any of the angles because these are the cuts. Once you make these cuts, these cuts are the ones that are dangerous that can actually, while they're drying, they can extend and actually end up as a crack so it's always a good idea to have a smooth uh, transition around the cut and not a sharp edge there so again if you see i'm not being very precise i'm not being too uh, precise with the shape of the rim that i have here i'm just i'm being careful that i don't make any sharp cuts around the edges because that's where i've seen a lot of these pots while they're drying they will end up, you know, starting developing cracks and then actually end up cracking. Now I'm going to take a damp sponge and start cleaning the edges here. Now this clay, now this clay like I said in the beginning, has a little bit of grog, has a little bit of specks. So if I use this regular sponge, it's going to bring that grog, that sand to the surface, that roughness to the surface. So what I'm going to go do is, I'm just going to first do one round with this. Fortunately, there are tools and <laughs> things that you can use to ease the process. Obviously, if you use your finger, a damp finger, that's the best tool. It will push all of those, that grog and uneven, that uh, roughness back into the clay. Or there's another sponge that I'll be using. This is again from Mud Tools. Um, I will list it all down. Uh, this is really nice and it works well with these kind of clays which are groggy or have sand or specks in them. You can clean the edges and they don't bring out the um, grog. For whatever reason, the way, whatever material it is, it really helps to keep it all inside. Now, I do spend some time on the rim. And then I'm going to lift this and do the same on the other side as well, because compressing the rim is really, really important, especially for this project. So just lifting it and placing it back here. Again, if you are a beginner, I would suggest that you take another board, place it on top and then flip it instead of doing what I did. I'm familiar with my clay and I understand and I know how this clay behaves and how it's going to impact all these uh, things that I'm doing to it. So uh, I don't mind being casual with it because like I said, it's a groggy clay. It's, it's not as temperamental as the white clay that I use. Because of the grog, it doesn't warp easily, it doesn't crack easily. Now, because I want the texture on the outside, this is ideal for me because now I'm going to place my jar, my form here at the center and then flip it. And then it's going to just fall around that jar in a free flow, free flow manner and then, you know, we'll work with it. So here's the jar that I'm using. Before I place the jar, what I'm going to do is bring out a piece of cloth. This is just an old bed sheet that's cut up into smaller <laughs> pieces. So I like to use this. I'll just place it in the center here because I need some kind of cushion um, and some kind of release between this plastic jar and my clay. It will act as a release and also as a cushion. So I don't accidentally end up, you know, hurting my piece with these edges. So I'm going to add this. In fact, I'm going to add two of these 
so I get a decent amount of uh, cover and here comes the other one I'm just using two of these okay and the reason I'm kind of pressing them on the clay laying it out on the clay so I can see where exactly my platter shape is my clay shape is so I can place my jar more or less at the center I'm gonna place this at the center try and find the center again you don't have to be very particular about it but some kind of center would be a good idea I think this looks good to me now I'm going to do the flip action and for that I'm going to remove all the tools and everything around on the board onto the side just remove everything and then holding on to the jar at the center and and lifting the board up I'm going to flip you probably probably wouldn't be able to see this on camera but let me just do it and come back this is what this looks like I'm going to place it on top of a banding wheel the jar sits on top of a banding wheel, right? So it's easy to move and turn it around. Okay, now you see the clay is going to go through a lot here when I'm trying to mold it. Now this is how, because my clay was stiff, it's not just flopping around it. I think for this, softer clay is a better idea. Now I'm gonna start shaping my clay a tiny bit around this form. So all I'm doing is pulling out certain areas and pushing in certain sections like this, creating these little ruffles you know at not necessarily uh, you know equal intervals but just trying to give it a more organic shape but at the same time making sure it's not just accumulated in one corner now if you see my clay has already started pressing like I can see these really fine cracks on the clay surface I'm going to just take my damp sponge and go over them quickly to just take care of those soften them up a little bit I think softer clay is a better idea but you might have to see what works for you. All right, so I'm just going to take small sections and fold them in a way that it gives it a little bit of a... Because I want a narrower profile, I'm pushing it in. You can have a broader profile, that's up to you. Again, I'm not being very precise with the way I'm folding the, I'm creating these folds. I need them to be a little bit more organic. That's the look I'm going for. You can be more precise completely. So this is a little bit of, you know, playing with the clay and the shape and just pushing it around a little bit. Now you have to remember that if you are somebody who's doing this for the first time, start with a smaller piece, start with a smaller slab of clay and try doing this with a smaller size before you get onto a bigger piece and a bigger uh, slab like I did. Because it's usually easier to handle and manipulate smaller slabs than a big slab so what that does it if you're able to do it with a smaller slab you kind of get some learning about the clay you understand your clay a little better you understand what technique works for you how to manipulate it uh, how to push the clay all those things you will learn when you're doing it with a smaller size and you'll have more success because it's relatively easier to manage so start with a smaller slab and then once you've had success with a smaller piece, then move on to something bigger. So now what I'm going to do is, once I'm happy with the way this looks, I think I'm happy. I need, like I said, I want to be looking for a more organic shape. What I'm going to do is let it sit and set up for a little bit. Like I said, because my clay was a little bit on the drier side, what is happening is I see these really fine surface cracks. So for that, I'm going to sit and now fix them. Again, using this sponge from Shell Mud Tool, I'm going to go over the clay surface and just fix those right here especially at the rim if I find any I'm going to fix those with this range with the edge of the rim just go through the texture and fix it so once I've done a little bit of cleanup work right here making sure that the rims are not under too much stress or anything I'm going to just let it sit and dry for some time I'll show you what it looks like after we removed and flipped everything all right now this piece has had some time to set up I'm going to now flip it and see what it looks like. I'm just checking before I do that to make sure that the clay is stiff. It's not really at leather hard. It's slightly, uh, it's probably on the soft leather hard side, but I think it will be good to flip. Also, I've added my signature at the back before it dried to this uh, stage. Now to flip it, I'm going to be using a little board here, place it on the base of the vase and then lift the entire thing. This is still sitting on the banding wheel, so I'm just moving the jar from the banding wheel and then flip. And this will tell us if it's actually stiffened up or not. Once I remove this, so there you see, this is actually staying 
in shape and you can see if it's the right consistency the clay is of the right consistency or not by just pushing the sides and seeing if it moves i can see that this does move a little bit but not too much i think it should hold its shape now before i let it dry all the way i'm going to make sure the all the edges are cleaned up and there are no cracks or unevenness around the edges so you know take the same sponge the one that we used earlier and go over the edges very lightly while supporting the vase so it doesn't just flop over I'm just taking care of the edges because here right now only the edges are under a lot of stress more than anything else to make sure they're all nice and smooth you may see some superficial cracking happening if that's happening just take this damp sponge and clean it up so I did leave this out without covering because I wanted it to stiffen up a little bit so I'm able to do all of these things. This wasn't under plastic but now when I'm drying it, it will be under plastic so it dries slowly without stressing the clay surface any further. So now once I'm happy with the way my rim and the inside looks, I'm going to now let it dry completely all the way under a sheet of plastic and it's going to take about a week before it's completely dry. I will keep checking on it to make sure there's no moisture collecting under the plastic and it is drying evenly and there are no cracks that are appearing at any of these you know stressed areas because here we have pushed the clay a little bit so just make sure that it's drying evenly that's the most important thing even drying and then once it's done all the way it dries all the way i will put it through brisk fire i brisk fire at about 950 degrees celsius and the last stage will be glazing which probably i'll again record the entire process and share once it's at that stage but for now this is what we have let me see if i can show you a glimpse of the pot from the side this is what it looks like i will take pictures better pictures and share along with the video so this is what we made in our class today i do hope you enjoyed the class apart from this i made another one which is slightly broader which is this one now again i use the same texture for the outside and the same size slab for making this the only difference was that for the inside i used a bowl form so you can use a regular bowl just make sure it doesn't have a foot ring at the back because that can get a little tricky if it does have foot ring add a few layers of cloth on top of it so that it doesn't cut through the clay in any case we will be adding cloth you have to add cloth if you're using a regular bowl or any round form you can even use a ball form to make something like this so it's just a bigger version, just a broader version of it, but it's exactly the same size. And I love the way this also has turned out. Now I do have some exciting glazing plans for this because on the outside I can do my a glaze which will show the texture. And on the inside I might do one of those you know drippy glazes where there's a lot of colors just melting and things like that. So that is my plan. And I will probably do a video on that as well when we get to that stage. But that was a class making these cute little, not little, making these beautiful vase, these beautiful organic forms. I hope you enjoyed the video. I'll see you next week with another fun project. Bye.